what we are saying now. It might just be in your next Sunday morning. You look at something and God just ministers unto you. But the most important thing is that you are ministered unto. I also want you to just commit your life into the hands of the Lord. Say, God, I put my life into your hands. My life into your hands. Fine, we're talking about the book of God, but it's all in God. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you. We ask for you being exalted and you fellowship together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me see that. Yeah. Okay, so um so what we're going to have, I'm going to you know more more or less open my wife will come in and I also come to just to be um I want to start by asking us to open to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. It's uh, Genesis 1, 2, 4. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, 2, 4. You need somebody to help us? Genesis 12, 1, 2, 4. Yeah. From your country, your people and your fathers also, to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth who will be blessed through you. So Abraham went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. His wife. Okay, thank you. So verses one to four, thanks. Um, so this is a very powerful, um, powerful verses of God speaking to Abraham. I know it's not a teaching meeting, not as a, you know, it's not a, it's not a preaching or whatever. It's like. So, but God told Abraham here, yeah, that's what I want to set as a basis of what we talk about today. God was the one who told Abraham to do what? To leave his country, his kingdom, hmm? and his father's house onto a land that he showed him. Now, God had the perfect plan for Abraham, you understand? But he never, he, didn't, he, he just told him to leave. He just told him to what? To leave. Hmm? And of course, in verse, he says, I will bless you. And then I'm blessing you. And when I cross you, I cross. And verse 4, the map of obedience, Abraham actually did what? He parted as the Lord had spoken. Listen. And Lord went with him, and Abraham was in five years old when he cut out of out of the world. So Abraham obeyed God. You understand? So what I want to say with these few verses is that whether we believe it or not, you understand? The template for our success is in God's hand. You understand? And as much as possible, as we allow Him, as we listen to Him, you understand? God unfolds, you know, what our path. No two templates are the same. The template that God had for Abraham was not the same that he had for his son Isaac. 
God is saying that he had for his grandson Jacob. We know that. So the same thing, no two templates are ever the same. No two templates. So the first thing is for us to understand and know the template that God has for us. So there's a template for you as a single person. And there's a template for you as a couple. So as we tell, share our stories, maybe we'll hear more about you know, those things. But I just want us to know that because we are all unique, each and every, every one of us, we are all unique. There is a plan, there is a purpose for our lives. Amen. And all we should do, they will say that says, um, seek first to understand. That goes more with counseling. First of all, understand. So, first of all, understanding. You understand? You know, so, there is a template, just like the Abraham. And, you know, so, that's understanding. And, and I think the sec second thing is also to point out the fact that we are complete. That God can use you the way you are, you understand. So he's one, 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 um, the one um, episode in the Bible I always talk about is actually Moses. When Moses, after he left um, um, Egypt, I think it was eighty years, the one bush incident, and God, God told him that he has to go back to Egypt, and. Um, to set the you know, to deliver the people of Israel. And Moses gave, Moses gave excuses. Hmm? The first excuse is that they won't believe me. I mean, who am I? Go back to you. Do you understand me? Right? And God said, okay, what do you have in your hand? Do you understand? He had the word which was, was his walking tool. Hmm? Then he gave another excuse. He said, I can't talk. You understand, like me, I, I, I cannot talk. Do you understand? I'm, I'm not, I'm not good speaking. And I always talk about my God. A God can just slap him and say, "Okay, bye. Now you can talk." But God did not do that. So you discover that God never did anything to change the circumstance Moses found himself or met with God. Into, you understand? So it means that everything that God needed to use Moses for to deliver the people, his people, was in Moses. Everything. God did not change anything. To overcome the fact that I cannot talk, God said, okay, even with your, your what? Your mouthpiece. So not to look at yourself that, ah, because oh this, because oh that, that is why I'm here, that's why I'm not doing no. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has a template. Secondly, you are all that you need to succeed to me. Praise the Lord. So, um, that's about that. So, um, maybe I'll just start. Um, you know, hmm, still is a big Come on. Yeah, just Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I'm very excited, you know, coming in. I just keyed into worship. Um, you have a beautiful, beautiful choir. I just want to thank you. I was looking back, you know. Well done to the brother and sister who led us in worship. I really did enjoy it. As short as it, as it was, it was very impactful. Thank God, you know. Just ushering us into the presence of the Lord. Ah, you know, when I heard about the book of love, I said, hmm, this is love story day, you know, and, um, and I know love means a lot to, it means different things, you know, to different people, but I guess what we're going to be talking about is a love that is centered, you know, around um, Christ. There's no other way of looking at love, you know, in our personal stories, and I'm sure you heard when Pastor Inka was talking earlier, in terms of how we met, so our foundation 
is deeply, deeply, deeply rooted in Christ. And I'm not ashamed, you know, any time to share my story. So, um, so, so, so that's it. So it's, you, you, we, it's a, I know there's a whole lot and many times, because I also work with a lot of young people. And you get questions around, you know, I, I, uh, a lot about how love is being interpreted in today's world. So permit me if I sound a bit traditional. Uh, but I always tell people, you know, when it comes to the things of God, they are timeless. The values, God's proposition for us, it's timeless, you know. And he, I mean, we all know it. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But that expression can be different. You know, the expression can be different because we also recognize that the world is changing and things get expressed differently. After all, the clothes we wore 20 years ago are not the clothes we're wearing now. But you must understand that the basic, the fundamentals are timeless. Whether it was 100 years ago, 50 years ago, or today. You know, and when we think about what, what love is, it, it's, I'm sure if you go to the dictionary, it will, tell, it will tell you something that has to do with intense feeling. You know, another one says strong, you know, deep. So it's intense, it's passionate. And what that means is it's not something that you, you stumble upon. It's not something that you have to take very lightly. You know, and it's something that it's because it's so deep, it's intense. You know, it's something of the heart and matters of the heart. You know, like Bible says, you need to guard your heart with all diligence. So it's 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 something very serious. And sometimes I really worry. You know, when people say, "Oh, I'm in love with this person," I say, "Really, you're in love with this person?" You know, and all that. But it it, it means it, it's something that is deep. And you know, when when and it's always very easy to fall in love. It's easy to fall in love, you know. The same men are moved physically by what they see. You know, the lady is beautiful, you think you are in love. That may be infatuation, you know. So it, it's so easy. And even when love is genuine, you know, when love is authentic, when it is real, when, you know, you are led, you've prayed, and it's real. I mean, it's not like you're, you're living in denial or deceit, you know. And it, it's easy at the beginning, you know, to fall in love. But you know, you know what? Staying in love... That is where the commitment is. So you, you can easily, you know, the led, you know, the angel, Michael, God himself, everybody can come and reveal to you, you know, that this is this person. And you're genuinely in love. And you get married. But staying in love, it's about commitment. You know, and that's where the God factor comes in. Because I don't think anybody can... You can't just click with a man and say, I'm going to live a perfect, saintly, it's going to be all dozy dozy 24 7 every day for 100 years. It's not. Even if you are, there's one guy called the devil, you know, who is there, you know, just roaring, looking, you know. So even if you yourself, you're taking time to, you know, live under the precepts and disciplines of Christianity, and <laughs> I only say that 1 Corinthians 13 will test you. You know, First Corinthians 13 to talks about love, and you know we all. I'm sure if I ask everybody, you know, say everybody will go, love is patient, love is this, love is that, love is this. All those things will be tested. All those virtues will be tested in marriage. So it's not something, and that's why when you're getting married, and I always laugh, you know, when you're getting married and you're taking your vows, that's why it's called a vow. A vow is a commitment. It's strong. You know, when you say God is not a man that he should lie, because it's taking a vow concerning us. You know, as long as we live in accordance with the precepts and what he has, you know, um, outlined for, for every believer. You know, I always say, you know, when couples, and we are, we're all guilty, on your wedding day, you know, when they are joining you, and you are reading your vows and your commitments, <laughs> some of people are thinking about the reception, and the cameraman is there, they are thinking about, oh God, all the things I said I want to do, who is coming, who is not coming, you know. So you're not even in there. You just, I, I can tell you, most often, most often, your minds are strained, you know. And I remember the year, a year after we got married, I really sat down. Because in our wedding album, we had the program that was in the album. And so it's like the first thing, you know, that you see. That was 20 years ago, that album now. Even though it's guarded, but it's really old. And I really read the vows. And for once, it kind of tickled me that, what? This is, this is strong. This is, is strong. And you know, for many married couples here, if you still have your wedding program, grab it, look at it, mm. and see what you've committed to getting into. And those things help, you know, in your moment of, in your unguarded moments, you know, those things actually do help. And it kind of brings you back.
to bed. So when I was saying that, you know, it, it, for me, um, marriage or law, it's going to be rooted in Christ. Because you can't run that race alone. You need the man, you need God, you know, who has brought you together to keep you together. So you see, there are different stages. There's the before you find, and there's the after you find, and after you get committed. And, you know, so it, it, and it's a journey. It's a journey. So the fact that you found someone doesn't mean, oh, now, yes, I've sorted and ticked married. You know, people have a laundry list of things they want to achieve, and it's a tick and bash kind of mentality you bring to it. Because and I know it sounds cliche, you know, your marriage can either take you to heaven or not. It's true, it's real. I've seen people who have been derailed because when the pressures of life come, and the pressures will come, the pressures will come, whether it's self afflicted or external factors. I've told you about the man, the devil, who we all know. Because his mission is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so he's going to come. He's going to test you in every facet. Maybe at the early stage, maybe at the middle stage of your journey, maybe at, it would happen. You know, I always tell people, if you live a life thinking, you're not going to have trials. You must be living in the planet of wishful thinking. Because it will happen. It's just that they come in different faces. But what keeps us, what would guard us, you know, is, is how strong, you know, and how rooted you are. And that's why, you see, when people come and say, I'm getting married to this person, I'm getting married. we always joke, my husband has eight siblings. I have three. So you can imagine the number of, and it's even if we take her nuclear or your extended family now. You can imagine the number of marriages. I think they're all married apart from one. You know, so we've had we've had several, several marriages. And it's always interesting when they come with introductions. And because we're both egg you know, they have to come home and say, yeah, let this person know. You start saying, you know, and all that. So you always know. And it's so expressive how you see, you know, when the Bible says deep collective. And time always has a way of telling. So you want a gorgeous, loving, fantastic partner, be it man or woman. The question you should be asking yourself is, how positioned, how ready are you to attract that jewel, that crown jewel? You know, because it will be like casting your pearls before swines, like the Bible says. So there's a readiness factor as well, you know, that comes to play. Please tell me when, when I should, you know. So there's a readiness factor that comes to play. And it's, you've got to prepare yourself first. It's, it's extremely important. You know, and it's like when people go for job interviews, they can't just walk in anyhow. How much more? Something that is going to alter your, <laughs> almost like your life. If this man says tomorrow, let's go to Kafancha. Of course, there's always alignment. And that's why I'm forever grateful and thankful. You know, I feel so blessed, you know, that God brought this man in my life. I'm not, just, I'm not just saying this in church because maybe it is the expected, you have to say something nice. I genuinely, and I genuinely made it. Even in the workplace, you know, I can tell you we have a joke amongst my colleagues and they say, oh, if we, want, we have a recognition program and they say, if we want to do recognition for spouses, you know, Mr. Bads will definitely win that award. That is even in the workplace. That's how radiant, that's how radiant, you know, his love is. So it's, it's, it's not a love that is just a cooler kind of love in the church or at home. It kind of evolves all around me. So it's, 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 you can't, when I think about my story today, you know, and when I said, we're talking church now because a lot of the nice things we say in church. But even in the workplace, I remember when you know, people would come and ask you, oh, have you been able to, especially for we women, you know, in a very challenging world and all that. So there's always, oh, have you been able to, da, 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 da. and I can tell you, 50% of the time, I'm called to speak. I always accrue it to this man. And I tell them, even if the office presents an enabling environment to want to make me aspire, if the home front isn't what it is, two things would happen that the marriage gives way or the job gives way. So it's, it, it, can, it takes, when the Bible says, can two walk together except they agree. These are not, don't read them lightly. They are real. There's power. There's power in those things, you know, when it comes to, you know, what, what love is. 
And so that's why I think it's important that we have an understanding, you know, of what commitment is. And God will help you, you know, when you make that commitment, regardless of what comes your way, you know, he's able, able, you know, to keep you. You know, Ephesians 3.20 says, you know, to him who is able to, to do exceeding abundantly, above, exceeding is enough for abundantly, above all that you can ask or all that you ask let me use kjv he likes kjv i like niv but we are lying today that we do kjv you know so you know that we we ask or think so it's one thing to ask it's another thing to be fearful not because you feel it's so big can i or think niv will say imagine immeasurably you know so it's that's the god we have through the power that work it in us. So you must understand that because that's that's the foundation of everything you're going to be talking about. Otherwise, it's just going to be floating all over the place. And that's why you see people, they get married, two years they have, they've packed it up. Five years they've packed it up. You know? And they were so in love and you just wonder. You know? So, but God help us. So, um, so that we're not speaking too much. I know you get a guess. <laughs> Maybe I'll start. I'll, I'll tell you a little of how we we met, how we started, and she also talked a little bit about. Now I told you no one was was good. No from our thing. Okay. So let me start. Let me start. Okay. okay. So you found so you should start. <laughs> okay. So okay. Um. Like 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 I said, we. She joined Fosco in 1984, uh, you know, and I joined Fosco in 1985, you know, um, of course, vocation by our parents and all that. And uh, we were teenagers. I was a teenager. I wasn't even a teenager. At 1984. I was a teenager. Teenagers were 13. So, anyway, so we were teenagers. I was a teenager. And um, so, of course, I, I was not church before then. What I knew about church then used to be um, special service. You understand? That's what we do in church. But the first time in 1985, my father took us to church, and that church happened to be first square, less than a time. That was the first time. And for the first two years, I hated church. You understand? Because I had my plans, you understand, of what I wanted to do in the world. You know, but it was like so I didn't give my life until it is seven, nine eighty seven. Two years after I gave my life to Jesus. That marked a change in my life. And I abandoned all. When I say abandoned all, I actually abandoned all. You understand? I mean I can tell you that for years for Almost ten years, I didn't know what music was. And I mean, I used to love music. I mean, those days, uh, you know, there was no internet, so write down the songs. You know, all those school and the guy, Shalom. I can still sing those songs. You know, now, do you understand? You know, I still listen to my station is nine seven one, which knows old school classic. So they play all those songs. So I, I enjoy those songs. But when I gave my life to Jesus, I I had to. You understand? I, I love books, novels, did damage to me and all that. So it, it was a lot. So for many years I was out of music. I wasn't listening to music. We didn't have cinema those days. We used to have all those schools, you know, pen cinema, I did that and all stuff. But they were very few and far between those and all that we now have all over. So so those 10, at least 10 years, I didn't know what was happening in the world. It shocked some of you that I've never clubbed before. Never clubbed before because those are the things I aspire to do when I get invested. Do you understand? But I didn't get the opportunity. Do you understand? But I've never clubbed. I've never, what else? Anyway, that was it. So I was lost in church. Not lost in church. Found in church. So, I, I, what I meant was that I was so much into church. And you know, my 
people in first start me with them for white shirt, black. You know, but I think the good thing, because I'm, 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 I'm not, you see, I didn't put, I was not good enough to go to the environment college. I wasn't. When I did come in for those days, they said I didn't make cut off. So I didn't, I, so I went to a good high school and so I went to high school. I mean, I'm sorry. Yes. That's what I went to. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was the school. That was the school that was good enough to go to. You understand? And again, I wasn't good enough to study law. I wanted to study law. I didn't mean to cut off a law. You understand? So I studied English. And I, I know I, my father, my uncle, you know, when he heard I went to, I went to do my master's in English. He had used. How can you go and do? First of all, when you do PA English, now when you do MA, how can you? you understand? So I stopped, I studied a subject. Some of you studied cursing. <laughs> studied disciplines, these <laughs> subjects. I know it, but you say English is different than that. You know, right? <laughs> so that's it. So I wasn't, I didn't go to the federal university. I wasn't good enough. Well, maybe, I don't know. But I wanted to study law. So I went to Lasso. So I call it, I tell you the way it is, it is Lasso. Do you understand? You want to from from the eyes and say Lagos State University, you understand? You know, I went to Lasso. So I don't know Lasso Oh yeah, that was my school. So I tell you these things just to know that look, there's nothing about whoa, whoa, this guy was sure you understand, you know. That was it. But there was something in me that was, I don't know, was more than for me to be. This girl went to Queen's College. And every time we play, every time we talk, and I you she answer, I said, look at all those your kids, boys, NGC, Janiki boys, and you know, do you understand? So when I say it is not about. There's so much that is in you when you discover. It takes you, it takes you, it takes, it takes you places. Do you understand? You know? The same thing when I say, okay, fine, I didn't, I didn't go to the Harvard of this world, I didn't go to Columbia University, I didn't go to all those schools. But I worked with people who went to those schools. I worked with, you know, I worked with sons of former vice presidents, governors. Of people that they had the money to send. You know, they, they went to Ivy for Ivy Express. Ivy Express. Yeah. 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 So, but look at me. We sit down in the same meeting, talk, all that. You understand? So that's it. So that was it. So, but in church, the same prospect that we are in, you understand? Nothing. Prospect, the same prospect. The same messages. Do you understand? But there's something about when you listen, you're in a church. Do you understand? So it was not one of those. In our own time, we had those wedding churches where churches like, um, help me, um, Church of God Mission. Church of God Mission. Church of God Mission. Glory Land. So I didn't get to go to all those happening churches that in our days. But nothing it's not about those happening churches. Anyway, let me let, let me move back to that. So I'll sit down here, you understand? And as I said that we joined the choir in five and we joined the choir in nineteen ninety. You understand? There was a time, you know, there was a time that we're not allowed to play. They said this one was devil. We, we, we should not play this one. <laughs> yeah, I know it only comes from piano. That's the most. You understand? So it took us time to 
to be able to convince them for us to have one like this. Mm. Yeah, but we will we stop. So we joined, we had this old choir called the Salters. One man called Pastor. What's the title? Now joined for square. Yeah, and he now said he wanted to start a youth church, youth choir. That's how we joined the Victors. Then there was Blue Landers in Yaba. And there was one youth band in Sudan Church. Oh God, those guys were good. Those guys were good. So first act and later wanted to be like. So we had the Victors. And that's when we jumped. And that's, you know, I had seen her before, but you know, normally she comes for holidays and just spot her. Nothing, you know, nothing. Just her, you know, nothing, you know, nothing. You know, nothing you know. So, uh -huh. so, but we now met in church. We met in church and we now joined the choir together. And that was how it was. And um, I had learned how to play the piano. Well, many of the things I learned, I learned as a teenager. Because I felt like I should be able to swim, I should be able to play the piano, I should be able to do this. So I went to music school to learn how to play the piano because I love to play the piano. So I went to music school. And after that, I just got my keyboard from, then I was saying in Roger Cartoon, two shoes for one boy to teach me, I had one castle. I felt at least bought that one for me. So I was learning how to play, play the piano, and that was how I now began to play the piano in church. You know, and she was singing. All that. Uh, yeah, she was singing, you know, I didn't say that. Uh, so, uh, so that was it. Um, and we ended up, we ended up uh, being, uh, you know, the same choir. And everything went on. And um, I lost years, the years because I, I, I spent a few years doing jam, and um, it wasn't funny. So. Rather well, than getting to the university in 87, I got in 1990. Yeah. So, jam. I was, yeah, exactly. You know? So, so that was it. But, um, fortunately, she wanted to study medicine. And um, she put in the University of, of course, Lagos because I hear that half of the people in the University of Lagos, um, half of them, usually come from uh, Queen's College for the medicine that we uh -huh. But something happened. Her physics was was seized. And she didn't want to lose a year. So she now no 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 her physics was not was, was, was not seized. The first year it was the second one that was seized. That first one yes that first one I think she it was this year that they cancelled the English because there was a leak, so people were scoring very high marks. So, even though she scored about 70 percent in jam, she could not make the cut off for medicine. Like so, because she didn't want to lose a year, <laughs> that's why she now came to last one year in biochemistry. Thank you, that you. So, all things work together for you. <laughs> so, there were two of them from her class that entered um, entered last year. You know, so she was doing biochemistry, and that was it. And the next day she attended jam to now go to lab to continue. Mercy, want to be a doctor. Mm. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that year they now seized her physics. I don't know why. They seized physics, so she don't have complete. So she has to do another, another year. Hey, she was already finishing year two, and she was not. She was not even taking it. I think she was on two to them. And I now told her, I said, why don't you just manage and just finish? And I still want to do medicine. You know that you are sharp. You understand? For all her mind, how can she be in school like this, lad and all that? And thank God she listened. And from that time, this lady was scoring 4.5, 4.6, 4.7 to a 5. I'm telling you, she was, she stamped up her mind, I will finish this by okay, I'm going to study medicine. Because she only had about less than two years, you understand? Because she had to do jam the next year. And that was her. And she ended up, I mean, she topped. She was the best 
religious student in my of course. Of course, when it's going, you know, we could you know, and she she listened. Thank God, and that was wow. how we met. Wow. <laughs> so, so that that's it. So we, we were, that that's it. Um, so that was from 1990 to you know our own set was when we closed university for two years. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we ended up spending this is 994 finishing 996 and um we now went to our university of Lagos, I went to do my master's, she also went to do her master in life. And um anyway, which I came out. I didn't talk my class, I was number four, but <laughs> so I came out with two one. Uh, so we both went to lab. We had challenges, you understand, because there was no funding. So we went to live, and we didn't want to be in live. And, um, but, um, no, before then we said now. Oh, we said. Yes, we said. And that was when I, I was there. You see, because we were, we, were, we were not engaged, we were not six years of cruise. In the church, they look at us and say, ah, when are these people going to get engaged? I will tell you that one of my closing is late now. Is late. He came to tell me in you know 1996, was it or was it 1995 or so? People in the church were saying, that, Ah, Charles and Tony, they are going out, blah blah blah. I said, Well, he wants to go for Tony. He now came to me and said, Charles, I've been here with this, I want to go for Tony and all that. You know, I just want to tell you. I said, Actually, I'm not keen with it. That I just close power. Nothing and all that. He said, Fine. Mm -hmm. And for two years, Gide was on her case. <laughs> was as good as if I go to her house, when I'm going to see her, if I see Gide's car, I will turn back. You mm -hmm. understand? When we we're serving, Gide flew to him that we said to her in the same We didn't walk it home. Hey. We didn't walk it. Who did this? Because, let me just that we did not work it because we said between our, each other we said that we wanted that one year let us even go and say somewhere you understand let us see if whatever we feel for ourselves we you understand for each other we don't you never believe that when she saw her posting letter in you know, I saw my own too we didn't work it we didn't work it my pastor Oluwagbon when we now we went to meet him, I, went, I think I was the one who went to meet him. He said, Okay, so Charles, where did they post you to? I said, Sir, Enugu. Sir, okay, okay, Enugu. What of Tony? I said, Enugu. He said, Ah, I don't know you do that. You understand? So we didn't work it. So we went Enugu for one year. Ah, one year. You understand? Um, um, Yes, yes. And in that one year, do you understand? She 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 were offered the Incorpus Fellowship. You understand? Because I've been so soaked in church work. I mean, forget forget it. Then uh, I, I teach about four times a week. I'll teach in school fellowship. I'll do life center teaching. I'll teach on Sunday things, you know, you understand? And sometimes four times a week. So I was so going with church work. So I said for that one year service, I was not going to do church work. So when I go to Inugu, I went to Kobas Fellowship. So she was the one who was active. You know, ah, she was so active in school fellowship. What I did, I said I would drive Kobas bus. So I was driving Kobas bus, taking them for they didn't know who I was. You understand, you know? And you used to pity and they say, ah. My this ginger sister who married, you know, will be going out with a man. You understand? I was doing that. They would do Bible study, though. It was towards the end of service that they came to know that ah, this guy has something more than we because I, I bought a new Bible. I said I wouldn't read that Bible, Genesis to Revelation to research, and I did. And I did that because I wanted, I mean, I had worked and worked. So that was, that was, that was, that was for me. So that was the service. Maybe I should allow her just come and come.
it's an interesting fellowship, I must say. Yeah. Um, where do I where do I key now? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think for me, uh, to be candid, we're both just lost in service. You know, and I always say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. It pays. It does pay to serve the Lord. It pays. It pays to serve the Lord, regardless of how convenient or inconvenient it may seem. You know. So, of course, at that age, I wasn't thinking of marriage. I mean, I was a teenager, so marriage wasn't at the forefront. You know, for me, I wanted to excel, you know, I, want, I was quite ambitious. I wanted to, you know, pursue career and all that. So, it was just like a friend, you know, it was a friend. And, of course, there were many brothers in church as well. But, of course, we were close, like you said. And um, I think we got closer when we started leading, I mean, you were senior high president. Of the fellowship, right? And um, so we're just friends. It was a very pure. It was pure. It wasn't with the intention of it was going to end up in marriage. So it was a relationship that was actually born out of my friendship. In fact, I had, like you said, there were quite a number of people at that time who, who would come in. But I, I was very closed off. Whether I was in school, whether because I, I felt disappointed in terms of what I thought I wanted to study. So I was a bit blocked up. And relationship was the last thing, you know, on my agenda at that time. But it was, it was somebody who was very deep, you know, he was deep. And he wasn't like the, like he said, I mean, and I'm saying this in all modesty, he wasn't like he was the, you know, most attractive of all of them, you know, at that time. He mentioned, that brother he mentioned, at that time he was a foot wagon, and the brother had a car. So, 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 Cars. Well, at that time, you know, as a youth, having a car was premium, you know, especially the first French church was premium. And so you can imagine the number of sisters that were clothing and all around and all that. So it wasn't, um, it, was, it was something pure. And for, but for me, at the heart of everything, I wanted a godly man. I wanted a godly man. I wanted a man that it would be easy to respect, you know be easy to respect because you know you don't have this choice about submission you know i was saying you know when it comes to christendom i know many times i get corrupted in all these women like Rachel, women these women that there's so many women plus. and i always tell them hey this one you're crossing the line though. this one is now conflicting with my faith you know in terms of some of the doctrines or some of the things you know women independence women these women. and you've got to be very careful as well because some of these things are anti god's principles so, um, but of course, there's some values. You know. I know the men are quite excited at that, you know. But there's some values in terms of belonging to some of those uh, powerful networks, where you must know, you know, where to draw, where to draw the line. So it was in the cost of service, and um, it was. Um, so it was, uh, let me get back on track. So it was in the cost of service, and um, for me at that time, like I said, so it was. I wanted somebody who was. Um, I wanted somebody who was, you know, very godly. I wanted somebody who was, who knew what God meant to him. Not just a peripheral Christian, you know. I didn't want somebody who was just floral, you know. Somebody who had an encounter. And most importantly, somebody who was broken. You know, it's one thing to be a Christian. It's another thing to be a broken Christian, you know. And so at that time, I, I just thank God that it was mercy. Because mercy just, because some of the insights you get, you know, it's a blessing as well when you have insights as to, you know, when God opens your eyes of understanding, there are many things in one's life that you cannot monetize. You know, but there are pearls of wisdom. So it was, it was, it was more around. You know, somebody who was broken before the Lord, because I've seen, I've seen what marriages that are not centered around Christ, no matter how floral they could be. And you know, I lived in Festa, so Festa was like a community. And you know, because it was a community, you could, you could, you. You don't need to say there are many marriages you observe by just in friends. And so it's kind of helped as well in shifting the kind of home that I wanted. Then secondly, I wanted somebody who desired to excel. Somebody who, who had a quest, you know, for growth, both professionally and personally as well. You know, and that sometimes, you know, and I always say sometimes, I thank God for the four square church. I thank God for your church, a youth church. You know, I think it's a blessing and you must... You shouldn't take these things lightly, you know, to find churches that are centered around, you know, common grounds, you know, common age, plus or minus, it's, it's rare.
So that's a benefit in itself. And you must milk every doctrine that comes, I can imagine, that comes from this altar. Because some of these things that God helped one, you know, to pick up Eddie in life. Because there are many people, you know, people need Christ at different stages of their lives. Some are already damaged. So you have to go through a damage control reign. But God is merciful. It's not how long, it's how well. You know, but there's a lot of benefits when you need Christ early as well. So that's our story. So it kind of helped us. And you must be careful and in terms of not just losing losing that that you have. So um so it, that was that was very key for me. Um it was key and you know I know my sister would say, ah but I don't want to call names. People felt oh, it was too dark, it was too this, it was this and, you know, and all that. But, but I wanted I wanted depth and you want people to be able to look at the future and ask God to open your eyes of understanding. You may not know it all. Sometimes we have a joke. We used to say, oh, we knew it was going to be good, but we couldn't think that it was going to be this good. Mm. And sometimes we also say, but we haven't started. Mm. So it's, it's, it's how God strings everything together in one's life. But there's a place of mercy in all this. So sometimes, you know, it's not always, you know, you have your plans and all that, and it doesn't work out. I thought I was going to end up marrying a doctor as well. And did a doctor come my way? Yes, a doctor did come my way. In fact, two, oh, thank you. Two doctors did come my way. Both doctors are in the UK now, you know, I think we connected. So it's not like you have the different shades, the shades and shades and sizes, but you know, but the 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 um um the I think for me the key thing, the number one thing was the God factor. I keep using that. I'm not found this very cocoa. So when I was benchmarking then, you say, why are you benchmarking? You know, for me, it was so easy. If somebody is not in the right place with God, it wasn't attractive. Regardless of whether you have the car, whether you have the, 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 the doctor, or your, it wasn't attractive. It wasn't a t attractive for me. So it, it kind of just helped. It wasn't a should I, shouldn't I, but that, it wasn't just attractive. It was like a no discussion, and they knew it. He knew it. The brother he talked about of blessed memory, of course, who grew at that time. It wasn't like, you know. And I'm not saying our stories are different. After all, who, which one of the prophets married a harlot in the Bible? You know? Yeah. Was, yeah. Thank you. So it wasn't, I mean, but those are outliers. You must be led. You must have a very clear vision. You know? So for me, that was what stood him out. And I started praying. And I really thought, because it became a thing of, is this born out of friendship or am I being led? Is this born out of empathy? Because it wasn't so linear. Because remember, we were friends. It's different from when you're sitting and one brother comes and says, the Lord says, or something. So, And I didn't want to get it wrong. So for me, that was the big, if you ask me, what was the biggest challenge? It was the biggest challenge of, is it because it's a friend? Or is this really, really what I want? You know, and we actually thought, and I started actually praying, of course, by the time you finish school, as a lady, you have to start thinking about it, even if you think you want to go pursue career and all that. So we thought, okay, I said, God, this service here is going to be it for me. Because never would I have imagined, out of how many states did we have, the chapter 36 states, no, they created them when we were seven. I can't remember how many states then, but 20 something states at that time. I never imagined that 20, out of all the 20 something states, we would end up serving together. So I thought service year for me was going to be the defining year. And lo and behold, like you said, we ended up paying together. Okay. So it was a very significant time for us. And we were lost in, I was lost in service. Because I, and why did I do that? Because you know, as a lady, you have a friend, emotion starts crawling in. You were serving in Okun, and where were you serving? Okunan, that's that one village far away. Because we also wanted, I, I, one of the things I told myself at that time as well, because I was touched, so I'm, I'm not trying to be holier than holy, whatever here. I wanted to marry as a virgin. So that was another KPI. So did the temptations come? They did come. Because imagine you have a friend that you've been together with and all that, and all of a sudden you find yourself, there's no child, nobody knows you and all that. So what helped us? And that's why I keep talking about service. Service did help. You know, I was, I just threw myself, you know, surrounded myself. I was in NCCF, you know, and all that. So it was very protective as well. And I think it was, you know, I said this, when the Enugu thing came, that was when I really said, Lord, what does this mean? What does this mean? 
you know, what does this mean? And I genuinely started praying about it. You know? And I genuinely started praying about it. And you know, it was it became very interesting because there was this peace. You know, when the Bible says the peace that passed all forms of understanding, I was so troubled because to be candid, and I'm being we're being as honest, we're not trying to polish anything. Like I said, it was something that was born out of friendship, and I didn't want to make a mistake, and I wanted to be sure. And I was troubled. Even when he started talking about it, you know, I said, Oh, don't make this in front of you have a good relationship. Why is that bringing marriage into it? It kind of just, you know, spoils the relationship and all that. But I started praying about it and generally I had that peace. It was a peace of, you know, this has always been destined, you know, to be. And the old restlessness within me around, oh, is this, this. In fact, Enugu was a defining year. Maybe that's another story for another day because I'm also conscious, you know, very conscious of the time. And for me, you know, when the Bible says the peace that passed all forms of understanding, you know, I felt it. I knew it, you know. And that was my conviction that this was this was the man that God had ordained, you know, for me. And he was he was very clear, you know, as we as we journeyed through. And there'll be so many things as well that would validate it, you know, as your journey journey continues. There, there are different parts to the story, but I know we're in church and we have a limited limited time. Maybe during the Q and A, we can take more, more 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 questions around that. So that, that that's our story, and God has been our enabler, you know, He's been our supporter. And have I looked back twenty years now and said, oh, I was moved by infatuation, I was moved by no. In fact, it's like the love. I told him, was it during this one year COVID? I said, I said, in fact, you've now become a platinum husband. <laughs> It's like you know, it's like the love has been renewed, you know, and I've grown to love it more over the years. So it's, that that's our story. That's our story. Amen. Well, we're going to talk about this because it's so key and new. But you know, I want to say that uh, you know there are challenges, and we are going to talk about those the challenges, maybe in the Q and A and all that. I know like 10 years, when we all talk 10 years, you know, I said, oh, what do I do for my 10 years? And I know that, you know, I needed more, more spark in my life. And I said, I was going to fast for 10 years. But God, you are, and I was one in all that. I couldn't do 10 days. I didn't tell her because that was me. So I did five days, you understand? And tell me speaking, what God did. You understand because like I said there were challenges, you understand? I had job challenges, we had challenges with you know shield and shield. So there were, you understand? So we'll talk more about all that. And um, and we'll see how we do from there. But the long and short of it. I, I don't want I don't want you guys to think that we're emphasizing too much and I will no apologies. If you think that we're emphasizing so much about church and how we met in terms of you know, being so in service, in service, it's not because we're in church. You understand? The same thing is where we're in a function whereby it's, it's not a church setting. You understand? There's no way it's not going to come to play. Do you understand? Yeah. So it's just one of those e episodes, right? It's just honestly, it is really based on. But we, we have we had a friendship. And I can tell you that we were not we are not the kind of people that we don't believe in. Um, we have to get one place before we whatever we have we share. Do you understand? One of our birthdays we were still in school then, and I know I you know I I took her to one place you know or the Sweater Palace Hotel. My father used to take us there a lot. I used to enjoy their sleep of sandwich of sandwich. I didn't have money to buy two. Johnson, we bought one, we shared. You understand? We shared. And you're going to hear a lot of that, you understand, about the challenges. I see, we, we, we'll, talk, we'll talk about, you know, finances, we'll talk about you know, job offers. You work in a place whereby, you know, um, after four years, you understand, they expect you to get a job somewhere else. You know, consulting firms are like that. 
before you go there, and after a few years, you know, the coaching, the companies will control for the coach. He kept on coaching her and coaching her and coaching her and coaching her. And he kept on still in Cape Town because we didn't get a leading for her to lead. To the extent that when um, Oloidi, one day called us to his office. Because when Oloidi was an MD of um, one of the US USC, so he knows what. And then he said, maybe you been thinking that this girl has been a KPMD for. Why is she not leading? All those and said she is disturbed that he's still not getting offers. Why she not let her say that they were getting offers? But as the offers will come, to will advise. We're not, you know, when when she didn't have an, how many of them have offered official cars, official? But we're not moved by all those things. Everything was based on what, what, what. So we turned down juicy offers. When I say juicy, very juicy of it. You understand? You know, because we knew where go we were sticking. It's a simple thing. Something comes up, you go back to God and say, ah, bro, no, this is sensible. Bro, no, I feel like going, you know, he's going to give you time. He talks to you. And something just happened. That's not it. I mean, so it, it's, it's a lot. We go through the journey, we go to talk about all these things. And we also talk about the challenges that we've also had and how God has helped us. Really. Hallelujah.